the Honourable Kyle McGinn. And, and I thank the member, uh, the Honourable Sandra Carr, for bringing this motion to the House. Um, very timely um, and very relevant to uh, my electorate in the mining and pastoral electorate. Uh, ten minutes does go very quickly, so I'm going to get straight into it. Um, Aboriginal communities are uh, very uh, vulnerable in respect of uh, food supply um, and uh, very vulnerable in respect of price gouging. Um, I think members in this place would have made themselves aware uh, in the last federal government there was a Senate inquiry into um, the price gouging of Aboriginal community stores. Um, I don't feel as though there's been too much come out of that. Um, I, I, don't, uh, I don't see too much that has changed. Um, you know, uh, if you've been out to an Aboriginal community, you can really understand the easiness of which uh, a greedy um, uh, owner of a shop could actually uh, gouge a community, um, particularly on payday, and then change their mind the next week. Um, for example, you know, uh, retail is a, is a, is a staple um, in, in some Aboriginal communities. And uh, you'll often find that that'll be the most expensive meat in the freezer, um, not solely because that's what it costs, it's because they, they're very well aware that people are going to buy rutiles. Um, and, and that type of uh, operation is insulting, um, and it, it absolutely attacks the vulnerability of Aboriginal communities, uh, which is not right. So what I will touch on is something that is very relevant to this motion, um, and touches on a little bit of what the Honourable Colin de Grusser was saying, but um, as always from the, uh, the Liberal National Government, there's this, uh, the Liberal National teams, um, there's a long, long time for that to come, buddy. Long time for that to come, Stimpy. Um, <laughs> see, see, it is funny that, that President I'm standing here talking about a federal responsibility and you're yelling at me to do something. You know what, you should listen. I've told you this many times. Listen instead of talk. So let's talk about... Just like you spoke to your colleagues about the GST fix, don't even talk to me about your government working with the federal government. What a disgrace. Um, so let's get back to the motion instead of listening to gibberish. Um, so in respect of what the Honourable Colin de Grusa was saying about the East Coast rail line going down. Um, it was a bit disappointing, the Honourable Colin de Grusa, that you didn't mention um, a very key integral supply chain um, uh, option, shipping. <laughs> so, so you've got to understand that, you know, you can, you, can, you, can, you can say that I bring it up all the time and that it's a pet project, but let's have a look at the realities. Let's have a look at the realities here. There was, at one stage, Norseman was on fire, the Eucla Road was closed, couldn't get through to South Australia. There was a flood up in the Kimberley. This was probably three, four years ago. The Kimberley was flooded. You couldn't get through to uh, the Territory border. Um, we all know the outback way is not ready. That, that needs... President, President, the order, immaturity, order, the immaturity order that comes from the other side, uh, in respect. Uh, okay, let's just cancel Indigenous Day for the football, the Honourable Yorn Sidma. Um, so, President, President, let's be moderate, hey? Um, President, let's talk about pre-selections over on that side. Wouldn't that be interesting? Um, so, so what what happened was you seen Kununurra cut off, the territory was cut off. There was no ability for um, anything to come in or out of the state. We've seen shelves go empty, um, and, and that even put more pressure on Aboriginal communities as well. What we did see also was when we attempted to try and get some shipping to bring food from the East Coast, it's all foreign flagged, and it has absolutely no responsibility to the West Australian people. So what did they do? They didn't provide us with any shipping space. So we were unable to bring anything in by rail, anything in by road, and we were, we were really lucky that we only seen the ramifications that we did. And it was months until you seen the, the, the shops um, refilled. And this government had the vision to turn around and say, well, this is a big problem. So they've, they've established, and I'm very proud to be the co-chair of the West Australian Shipping Supply Chain Task Force which is designed around ensuring that there is another supply chain, 
so that we don't find ourselves in this situation of vulnerability. And I'm not talking about the 1970s state shipping model. That is not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is Australian coastline waters that don't have flag of conveniences operating in them. Now, the, uh, the chirpy, smiley uh, opposition member over there might want to get a bit of a frown up when he, when he understands that the Liberal National Federal Government for the last 10 years destroyed shipping. Destroyed it. Do you know what your legacy, your, your team's legacy on shipping is? Walking onto the MV Portland at 1am in the morning and dragging Australian seafarers by the scruff of their collar down the gangway and replacing them with $2 an hour foreign exploited workers. Shame. What a disgrace. And where does that get us in respect of calling on that ship to assist us during a crisis? Absolutely nowhere. Whether you know this or not, the Honourable Neil Thompson, we are an island nation. We are an island nation. We, we have a history of seafaring in this country. And the supply chain, I believe, needs to be re reinvigorated to ensure that there's more options. You're talking about what are we going to do. That's what we're doing. That is what we're doing. We're getting to, getting to work on it. Whereas the last federal Liberal government was destroying it. And, you know, there's a, there's a the person here in the West that's an architect of it, um, Senator Michaela Cash, who just, oh, jeez, uh, Minister for Unemployment, seriously, absolutely no respect, no respect for the Australian workers. No respect for the Australian workers. She had no hesitation in handing out handouts to our COA, handing them out, but not ensuring, not ensuring that there was Australian workers on them vessels. 27 years the MV Portland operated without one industrial dispute. 27 years. And we've seen the Federal Liberal National Government destroy another Australian vessel. So, so the supply chain that we're talking about here is the ability, is the oh, oh okay, so Spitzer, Spitzer go and do a lockout and that's the workers' fault, is it? Because the Liberal National Government only care about destroying Australian workers. That's all you care about, let's be honest. Order. Let's talk about Order. when the Q had their dispute. Order. Settle. The Honourable Colm again. Thank you, President. You know, you, you've got to try and um, get the facts before you start spurting off the Honourable Colin de Grusa, because I remember when the cube dispute was going on and we had farmers that were dealing with issues there. And where was them issues coming from? That was coming from the employer, from the employer that created that issue. Let's be honest. You want to start talking about who's, who's at fault there, let's go back to 98 when you conspired to kick workers off their own workplace. Let's be honest. Um, so some other good uh, initiatives that need to be mentioned in my electorate. Um, Feed the Mob was another really good initiative through Lottery West that was done up in Carnarvon. Um, that initiative uh, fed many children during COVID um, and over $250,000 was put through. Um, did you buy one, the Honourable Member? Okay. So, so I, I'm not standing here denying that, the Honourable Dorana Farragher. I'm talking about a great initiative that came out of the Lottery West program, and I think that there should be more of that. Um, another one is Feed the Children up in Broome. That's another really good organisation that operates well. I hope you, you agree with me on that one, um, if you knew your own electorate. Um, so um, another one that I want to touch on also is, uh, obviously, the Hon Honourable Colin de Grusa mentioned uh, food Bank. I'm one of their members that work very closely with Food Bank, and you have to in your electorate. They are critical. Um, you know, some, there's some things that members can do, and I, I suggest you do. Go talk to them and find out if there's little things you can do better. Uh, one thing we did in Kalgoorlie was we found out that there was no bus stop near Food Bank, so we managed to get TransPerth to change the bus stop location to stop directly out the front of Food Bank, and that is a huge benefit because a lot of people that access um, food bank don't have access to their own vehicle. Um, and that's made a, a quite a big difference over the years. Um, another one I want to give a shout out is to the women's hostels right across WA. Um, I think the women's hostels and the short stays and all them sort of accommodations, crisis accommodations, they manage to get food off uh, the smell of an oily rag with their budget and they find it from all amongst the community members. I want to put a big Thank you to West Australians, particularly in my electorate,
who put their hand in their pocket and donate and assist and volunteer to these types of organisations that ensure that our most vulnerable, um, such as women in crisis, are looked after and that they've got food security. Yeah.